Lucy is a little green engine who can shunt and pull. He pulls both passengers and freight. At the docks and at the quarry. Yes, our little green goblin on wheels is mighty helpful in several different ways. Sadly, just like put upon Percy of season 5, he was beginning to get overloaded with multiple tasks. And it seemed like almost no one was listening to him either. But of course, everyone had time to criticize, naturally. You're late again, Percy, said the dock manager. I will have to speak to the fat controller. Percy was upset. Percy returned to Tidmouth Sheds. The other engines were already asleep. But he and his friends weren't alone. Somehow Percy developed superpowers and was able to hear people talking on the other side of the brick wall. You know, I could understand if it was the big gaping hole back in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, but that's a bit of a stretch. But what Percy couldn't believe was hearing Top Hat say to his driver he wanted him going to the scrapyards. The fat controller wants to scrap me, he cried, and all because I was late. The fat controller wouldn't scrap a really useful engine, said Thomas, and you, Percy, are a really useful engine. Percy felt better until he noticed the time. I'm going to be late. <laughs> what are you rushing for, Percy? Do you want to be scrapped so soon? No, actually, he had a different plan. He decided that if he could finish his jobs on time, he wouldn't be scrapped. Okay, sounds plausible. That is, until he arrived at his first job, waiting for Cranky to finish his part. Hurry up, slow coach! Wished Percy. I must be on time! I'll take as long as I like, said Cranky, and he went slower than ever. The moment Cranky had finished, Percy took off. Holy crap! That was almost as instant as Spencer from the last season, blowing off Gordon. In typical Percy fashion, though, his intentions were met with trouble. As he was making his way out of Brendam Docks, he went around a curve, and with his speed and momentum, his pipes rolled right out of the flatbed. Fantabulous. But did you hear what Percy called Cranky? Another season five reference, old slow coach. Percy thought he'd delivered the pipes, so he chuffed away to his next job. Percy was to take some tar wagons to the workmen mending the roads. Be careful, said his driver. Tar is sticky stuff. Oh, he better be careful with those drums. Percy has had his fair share of sticky messes before, so he should know. Whether it be a crate of treacle, raspberry jam, or fresh fruit, Percy should be having war flashbacks right now. Not to mention he saw the aftermath of dirty objects from season one. Then again, what do I care? Let's see if there's another sloppy surprise coming down the line, shall we? Oh, and let's not forget another faceless lorry. How wonderful. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Gordon was very cross. What will the fat controller say? <laughs> I'm sorry, but the way Angela said that line was very funny. What will the fat controller say? Uh, I know my impression is weak, but don't remind me. But Percy thought he knew what he'd say. I'll try a different impression and say it like how Alec Baldwin voiced Ari from Stepney Gets Lost to Season 5. Bye-bye, Percy. <laughs> And that's exactly what he did. Percy ran away. Again. From Gordon, no less. Just like season one. Where is Percy? He said. He has caused confusion and delay. He just left very quickly, sir. He heard you at the shed, sir, said Thomas. He thought you were sending him to be scrapped. I think I need a word with Percy. I'd say so. But first, what happened to Angelus's voice? Did he just have a pot of soup? He sounded all bubbly and gravelly. Anyway, Percy was such a great hider that nobody on Top Hat's fleet of a gajillion engines could find him. Wow, some search team. I'll say it again, maybe Top Hat should invest in some search and rescue party? Or something? I don't know, just saying. Thomas and the Fat Controller were looking for Percy on Thomas's branch line. Thomas suddenly had an idea. I think I know where Percy is, sir. And he puffed back to Tidmouth Sheds as fast as he could. Lo and behold, Thomas and Top Hat did find Percy, in the most obvious of places, 
hiding in Tidmouth sheds. Seriously, nobody checked here? Oh, whatever. There, Top Hat confronted Percy and explained that he had heard about Percy being late and wanted him to just take the post train for the rest of the week. What a misunderstanding that was. So Percy carried the mail all week. He wasn't late and he didn't make a mistake. Not one. And Percy decided never to listen to silly stories ever again. Especially not ones made up by himself. That's the key. Letting your imagination run wild can do real harm sometimes, which is exactly what happened to Percy here. Just because there's hearsay doesn't mean it's all, if any of it, true. It's understandable why Percy acted the way he did, but he should have asked first. Meanwhile, Percy gets off scot-free after blasting Gordon with tar and dumping steel pipes all over the track. Nice one. The story itself isn't that different, being that Percy has had other misunderstandings. But all the little quips and scenarios that remind me of other classic seasons was fun too. The music to this episode was pretty basic, but still enjoyable. More or less, the episode begins and concludes with Percy's new theme. The intermittent music is kinda just there. As for set pieces, there really wasn't a place featured more than any other, really, which is surprising. Tidmouth Sheds probably got the most. The flour mill was seen again, Gordon's Hill, and one new spot called Kildane Junction, where Gordon got splattered with what I'm sure was really molasses. Although one other spot I enjoyed was the line Percy spilled his freight on where it's just outside Brendam Docks. There you could see Cranky far away. Next episode is Thomas, Emily, and the Snowplow. Thanks for watching. Thank you.